Last but not least, let's turn up, Nier. What do you have for us? So, I watched uh, Nier Automata, uh, version yeah, 1.1a. Uh, well, <laughs> Is that your namesake? <sighs> sort of, yeah. Actually, a little bit. Um, so, if you haven't heard of Nier Automata, I don't know how. <laughs> um, uh, Nier Automata is a video game. Um, is this really launched... a Dragon Guard? Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, Nier Automata launched in like what, 2016? Um, for the PS4. Uh, it is a sequel to uh, the game Nier. Um, and I think. I think over the course, uh, like since launch, uh, Near Automata has sold something like four million copies. I think um, it's been, you know, it's gotten DLC. It's re-released on the Switch recently with some extra bonus goodies, um, and it's a pretty popular game. Um, it's gotten a lot of fan art of uh, the main character's ass. And uh, people, people enjoy this this uh, game. What was the what was the whole debacle yes. with Yoko Taro? He's like, "Where's this fan art?" or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, or he was like, "Where this? Where's this fan out? S- send it to me in a zip file so I can look at it." Yeah, he 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 was encouraging of the ass. I think. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, um, this is an anime adaptation of sorts of the game. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, we normally don't get uh, many of these in the anime industry. Uh, you don't really get uh, post-launch um, video game adaptations. You typically get um, simultaneous multimedia projects. Uh, yeah, yeah multimedia, like multimedia things. Um, yes, yes. You know, yes. promotional stuff. Uh, it's very rare that you'll get uh, an anime for a game that is launched. You know, mm. like fucking god. <laughs> It was like seven years ago now. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so this is uh, an A1 Pictures uh, production. Yes. Um, Obviously, they also have the Screenix money, so they will have yeah, some other they've got Screenix well. money. Yes. Um, a lot of, obviously, a lot of uh, subcontractors. Um, yes. Directed by Ryoji Masuyama, who uh, is an, primarily an animator. Um, from his career uh recently uh in terms of direction he did uh great pretender he seems be, he's he seems to, he seems to be an old like gynax a1 yeah he's, person, he's an right? old gynax guy um yeah he directed or uh, he was assistant director on great pretender uh he was director on blend s uh but really yeah. outside of that i mean he was key animator um on girl in the gone uh the evangelion movies uh, I believe he helped on Mahoromatic, Penny and Stocking, you know, okay. guy next oh. stuff, right? Um, oh, this right. is a good pedigree. Yeah, he he is primarily an animator. Um, I believe he's he's contracted like uh, for Trigger stuff as well uh, here and there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, but he's he's director and series composition. Um, as for the rest of the staff, I mean, a lot of it's kind of just like, um. I mean, it's, it's they're they're good talent. Um, obviously you have Keiichi Okabe for music because they're reusing uh the video game music. Because why the fuck wouldn't you? Uh, it's generally one of the best scores like released for a video game. Um, and then of course you have uh Yoko Taro, who's the original creator. Um, who's also doing series composition. He's overseeing this. Um, but yeah, uh, it is, uh. Unfortunately, this series has um, uh, recently, like I think two weeks ago, got hit with an indefinite delay um, on its mm. production. Uh, there are currently only three episodes out. Uh, the fourth episode was delayed due to uh, COVID. Um, and you know, when Did COVID breaks better? out, when COVID breaks out in an anime studio, uh, it's not like you could just go back to work uh, after a couple of days, right? So. Uh, pretty much everybody has to quarantine, I'm sure. So hopefully uh, it picks back up again soon. But um, I think there's enough to cover here to really talk about it. Um, 
but yeah, uh, I guess I'll just start off with it. The the basic plot premise, or at least premise that's given to you initially, um, is that um, the year is like 5,000 something, uh, and humanity in the past was attacked by aliens. They were invaded by aliens, uh, and the aliens used robots to basically wipe out humanity. Um, and then humanity retreated to the moon and built mm -hmm. um basically super combat androids um and they've been in a war ever since um and then that's uh that's basically your initial setup um you know you know you know what kind of upsets me the way that you the way that the premise is described <laughs> Kind of reminds me of the premise of Black Rock Shooter Dawnfall. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But so, you know, so you know, this is a a Yokotar story. Um, yes. and you know the 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 original game, um, Near Automata has been heavily praised as uh, yes. one of the one of the better uh, takes on you know, I guess a more philosophical story in a video game uh deals with a lot of themes uh primarily the one you see most people harp on um is the humanist story of uh near automata and sort of like what it means uh to be human um what is a human uh stuff like that there's a lot of nihilist themes um and sort of like how do you deal with essentially the inevitable like end of everything, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that, uh, and it, I, it deals with it in very interesting ways, very good ways, in my opinion. Um, obviously, it's not perfect, but you know. Uh, the as for the anime, um, is this a is the anime an actual just uh, run through of one of the routes? It is a truncation of like the core kind so, of story. What is it? So the issue is um, when you're dealing with Yogotaro, right? Um, Yokotaro, <laughs> <With your dear. laughs> yeah, Yokotaro okay, is famous, famously on record saying he does not like doing the same thing twice. He never wants to do the same thing twice ever uh -huh, in his uh -huh. career, right? Yes. So yes, yes. there are change story elements here. There are new story elements here. There are new characters, um, which is a yeah. very dangerous road to take. For... Especially since he hasn't worked in an an with an anime form before, as far as I yeah. can remember, right? Um, yeah, he's. I mean, Yokotaro has done. Like, if you can think of a form of media, Yokotaro has probably done it. Uh, I, th I believe anime. I believe this is his first foray into anime. Um, right. But yeah, Yokotaro has. He's written novels. He's directed video games. Okay. He's written stage plays. You know, like you you name it. Uh, he's, What's he's your favorite? Done, Yoko he's done Taro fucking puppet work, shows. Yeah. Uh, I mean. For me, it's the original Nair. is is my favorite. Which one, Gestalt or the one with the old man? Um, is I that mean, the both are good. Uh, I believe the one with old man is Gestalt, All and right. the one with the the young brother is Replicant. But yeah, um, the original Nier is my favorite, obviously. Uh, with um, Dragon Guard three being a close second, but um, yeah, um. As for as for this anime, uh, with episode one, it's a very straight, just retelling of sort of like the tutorial level of the video game. Um, okay. And I heard it one, even has the same shots. Yeah, it does. It it does sort of the same lines. It it recreates a lot of the same shots. Um, but it's not good. Uh, episode one is is bad. Episode one is really bad actually what do you um, mean by bad <laughs> it's way. fucking bad so like audio visually yeah uh okay. so episode one has probably well, some of the worst the... probably some of the worst cg i've ever seen in Look at the game yeah in an anime that. um oh i saw like, some of those si si shots actually yeah i yeah, remember that so who so, took who took control of the a1 pictures themselves took control of the yes yeah, as, as far as i'm aware a1 mm. pictures is doing the, the 3d cg it's not good uh it's it's mm. it's pretty bad throughout um it's especially bad in episode 1 because there's a lot of it um 
and uh, it, it, it's very baffling. Uh, I don't really know who sort of okayed that. Like, uh, I, I'm not really sure if it was a time thing or or the what. The only the only other times that they did CG stuff, like in their entire history as A1 Pictures, as far as I can tell, is Ace Attorney season two, which was Promise really Neverland, bad. both seasons. And a little bit of, uh, I think, uh, Al- Albuta. Rascal does not dream of dreaming. Uh, Rascal does not the Bunny Girl sent by movie or whatever it is. There being which CG wasn't in that. very good either. Yeah, and but I think yeah. side kind of movie for that. But yeah, uh, Promise Neverland and Ace Attorney was literally the only p- time that they've done it in their entire history. I think pretty much. Yeah. Oh, they might have done. Uh, they did uh, twenty. Um, they did a little bit of. Oh right, they did do El No Zero stuff. I forgot. Uh, Fuck, <laughs> bruh. Well, we, we no, a, wait. They they have had a little bit of experience, but they've never really been that like. None of their stuff has been really that. How how do I say this? Like good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. None of the good except for. I mean, El No. I think El No was okay. But the reason why. Alnoa was okay because they did CG for Mecha. Mecha. Yeah, it's it's Mecha CG, and also like pretty much all of Alnoa's like like Alnoa's entire aesthetic is like the sunset, you know, like the Mech in the sunset kind of thing. So that really just elevates. Or like against the huge background, it's not a lot of like super fast action scenes. It's not like a Gundam kind of thing, but it's more just like oh, we have this Mech slowly walking across the bridge or whatever it is. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but yeah um yeah i'd say episode one looks worse like the cg in episode one honestly looks worse than like reboot like straight up like, it's it's bad it's really fucking bad um the models they use are worse just way worse than what they could have done it, like if they literally just ripped the fucking video game models it, like it would have looked better straight up um <laughs> It's it's really bad. Um, so yeah, you could just straight up skip episode one of this series, in my opinion. Uh, you're really not missing anything at all. Um, episode two, however, uh, starts very distinctly. Um, it breaks off from the video game. Uh, it starts following... Um, it actually sort of has the perspective of one of the machine life forms, which is like one of the enemies. Um, and sort of oh, him, okay. sort of him evolving, um, and going beyond like just being a machine of war, and sort of uh, you know discovering um, knowledge and specifically knowledge about flowers, um, and he essentially becomes a gardener, um, and you know it's sort of throughout the episode it sort of has this story of him, you know, evolving and. You know, giving up on fighting, um, and sort of just cultivating this big field of flowers. Uh, but regardless of his efforts, he still gets carpet bombed anyway, right? Um, is this is this just a small like uh, not like a mini episode, but like a small episode that is isolated within the bigger anime? Like you had just this one episode and then the it, next it's sort of going it's sort of just a small arc throughout the episode. It's not like the focus of the episode. Oh, um, it's like a side kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's sort like of a just side like, perspective. Yeah. Separate um, perspective. Yeah. But yeah. And then okay. uh, episode two introduces you to uh one of the anime original characters, uh Lily, who was not in the video game. Um however she was uh Lily was in some of the stage plays, the early stage plays, um, which go over like very early on, like the sort of war, I guess, um, the the what they call in like in universe the fucking Pearl Harbor incident um, of uh, Nier Automata, um, and sort of like the initial android attack, um, but yeah, in the game. Lily is supposed to be fucking dead. Um, but in the anime, uh, Lily is sort of... Um, like, she's the leader of the Resistance on Earth. Um, and she obviously has history uh, with Yorha, um, which is heavily hinted 
Uh, and we also get to see um, Devila and Popola uh, much earlier on than we do in the game. Okay. Uh, so we get a bit of lore there. Um, a lot of a lot of the ex- stuff in the anime is sort of expanding on um, what someone who has played the game might already know, uh, but sort of changing it up a little bit. Um, you know, giving hints here and there. Um, so yeah, I think this, like overall, it's really hard to say, like. Because like there's there's no way, I, I really can't recommend this to somebody. How many who, how many episodes is this? How many episodes is this? Can I first ask that? So I don't I don't think there's a solid number uh, that I could find. I I would have to assume. Like, <laughs> well, I have to assume four. how. Yeah, because because they're res- well, really, I mean, I mean, they're really they're not like, very how? far. Um, with the, yeah, they have there's to three episodes. Whole there's three episodes thing. now. It has to be twenty four. Um, so if they're going through the entire Route A, uh, which is what I would imagine they would do, um, Consider or, it's, considering it's one point one A, I would. I, yeah, I'm I, I imagine that's they're, they're going to do, like, this is do like a, a slight a, variance. Yeah, a slight variance on, on a. Route A. Um, so I would assume my, it's a my, twenty-four episode, maybe twenty-two, twenty-three, something like that. Um, but yeah. So my uh, follow-up question is. I don't even want to ask how it's going to end because it's not a good question to ask right now, I think, with this series. But what do you think is going to be the format of this? Has the format of this series been determined? Is this... Because this... I don't... From your description, again, I could be completely stupid. I could be very small-brained. I'm just not very clear on what sort of story, what sort of formatting, what sort of perspective it really wants to tell. Especially since, like, it would be one thing if Yoko Taro just grit his teeth and then Nier Automata was just a play through of some route, right? Um, but he's gonna, he wants to do something unique, so I don't know what, what is the format going forward for this series. I don't really so- understand. The way I see it is it's going to be largely a retelling uh, of the video game, right? Uh, obviously, okay. there's going to be um, the new characters. Um, there's going to be new scenes, you know. Um, the main difference I see happening is mm-hmm. when A2 shows up, right? Um, okay. Which obviously hasn't happened yet. Um, because it's very clear that this character, the new anime character, um, Lily, has is a very clear history with a2 whether that's a good history or a bad history remains to be seen i'm assuming it's not good because when uh lily first sees 2b she thinks um that 2b is a2 and she points her fucking gun at her um Uh. so so i'm gonna assume it's it's probably not a good history but um i'm imagining that's where the story is probably going to diverge a little bit more um, other than that, I imagine it's going to be a fairly straight shot outside of like expanding upon um, some minor side stories here and there. Um, you know, maybe again giving more perspective to the machine life forms and them evolving, them sort of developing yeah. emotions. Because I again, would be I would be shocked if there isn't a longer section with Pascal, like yeah, from um, from their perspective too. Yeah. So so I think a lot of it is going to be pretty straight adaptation but sort of just an expansion upon uh the source material right um they've sort of already done that in the past with so there's a novelization of the game as well called i believe short story long um which which does delve into more of the side characters and stuff like that um but i imagine this is going to be a bit of a similar scenario just with you know some anime original stuff uh thrown in hence the 1.1 um do you think you it don't. can be paced properly within a 24 episode season? Oh yeah, for sure. Um yeah, Route A, a Route A, maybe. so Route A is, is not very long um in terms of like story beats. Um yeah. there's a, there's a few key like story moments. Um you know, you get your it's very like beginning, middle and end kind of story um with, you know, lay lay sad ending. Um whether that that, that changes or not 
Uh, I'm not sure. But um yeah, they could they could definitely pace this out um mm-hmm. within twenty four episodes. Honestly, I feel like they could do maybe a bit less, maybe something weird, like eighteen or nineteen, I don't know. But uh I imagine it's probably gonna be twenty four. I c I really if they do a twelve, I don't see it working very well. They're gonna have to rush and truncate really hard. Uh which I think won't <laughs> work very well with the way that they're obviously approaching this. Um but yeah. Uh, unless they do a second core or something, I don't know. But um hmm. yeah. Um yeah, back to back to what kind of what I was uh really saying is like in terms of what audience this is for, um I don't think this is for people who haven't played the game at all. Like at all. Oh, it's uh, so it's another sort of okay, it's something for the fans. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think if you haven't if you haven't played the game um or like I don't know watched a synopsis or something like fucking people do um which you should really play the game. Dude, the but, story um, is so confusing though. Yeah. But um yeah, I think Where's, if you haven't played the game, what? you're really doing yourself a disservice by watching this because like they're dropping so many hints. There's so many like, you know, little Easter eggs and stuff here and there. Um, I mean, hell, there's like in episode three, right? There's um, so in near Automata, when you go to the desert area, right? There's mm-hmm. the the enemies, right? The machine life forms, there's the little round dudes, right? Um, the ones in the desert area have robes and like masks on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is an obvious reference to the first game near where when you go to the desert area in near there's this uh like desert kingdom and everyone there wears masks um because they're like a society that's obsessed with like making rules and you know one of the rules is to like never show your face or whatever um right and so that's like an that's just sort of an obvious reference and in the game it's really about as far as it goes right they they make some uh allusions to Oh, they're they're um they're imitating like a previous civilization, right? And that's that's where it begins and ends. Um, but in the anime, uh, 9S hacks into one of the robots and literally oh, sees okay. literally sees the memories of that kingdom. Like it just straight up shows the original kingdom from the first game. Um, so like there's a lot more for the fans um than like what it's even in the game you know uh so i so this is this is really not for people that are just like oh gee what's this what's this near automata thing i've been hearing so much about i'm gonna check out the show because i don't have time for the game or something like this that's not that's not the audience for this i think um this is definitely for fans um which i think is i guess subtly alluded to by the you know the title of the one point one, um, but again like Yokotaro has done that a, a lot right like the the DLC for Near Automata was literally just like a bunch of fucking numbers, um, the remake for the original Near is literally what is this like version one point two two four seven four four eight <laughs> seven one three nine, yeah yes. so, um, like he he's done that in the past so. Uh, can I, 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 can wouldn't, I, also, I wouldn't really blame um, anyone for just ignoring that, but yeah. Can I ask? Uh, so obviously you're not like an esper or whatever, but do you think the way that this near series is made much more for the fans and those people who have kind of gone through the story already? Do you think that was by Yokotaro's design or intention, or do you think that was mainly the production people pushing for that sort of stuff? Um, I mean, I think the I think a lot of the expanded scenes, the more like the uh more expanded upon references and stuff, and a lot of the hints and early lore. I think I'll probably a decent amount of that is you know Yokotaro sort of reaching in and be like, hey. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this actually, um, and the staff sort of just being like, "All right, sure." 
Um, but as for like the overall, um, like it being, I guess, less newcomer friendly, I- I'm not sure. I-, I feel like that might be a fault of it just the general direction. Um, maybe it's just a lack of being able to balance uh, some of the new stuff with sort of catching the viewer up with what's going on um, mm-hmm. in terms of world building and lore and, you know, uh, character motivation of what they're doing, stuff like that. Because, you know, mm-hmm. with a lot of video game adaptations, right, it's sort of hard to take a character, a video game character, like especially a main character, who's sort of just, um, especially a character like 2B, right, where she's kind of just like, she's, I mean, she's the, like, go-to Ishikawa Yui character, right, where she's like stoic, uh, she doesn't talk very much, really all she does is fight stuff, um, right, right, you know, she's right. point A to point B type character, right, it's sort of tricky mm-hmm. to translate that from a video game where that's pretty standard, right? It's obviously like, yeah. This is because the most I'm of, controlling. Of it, I'm gonna go yeah. from A to B. I'm gonna fight stuff, right? And then this cast yeah. around me is sort of gonna, mm. you know, um, bounce off of the main character, right? It's hard to go from that in a video game to sort of translating that to a a movie or an anime or a, yeah, or because a, because a show, in the right? game, because in a game having a lot of silent expand a time where literally all you're doing is walking around and maybe doing stuff occasionally it's perfectly fine in a video game but that's not fine at all in an anime or a movie you can't just spend 10 minutes walking around places yeah. you have to well, do something it, you have to do a lot it of also things. has it also has another you know layer of or not layer but another like a, a assistance almost in in character motivation where it's like you know, you don't really need to explain the character motivation in the beginning of Nier Automata behind you dodging bullets and shooting things. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. when you're not the one doing that, you're asking the question of like, okay, well, why is this happening? Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, why Why are the characters doing this, you know, outside of they've been told to? Um, but yeah, um, I do think, I do think, you know, obviously it's not easy to do that, but I do think that it this show sort of hasn't succeeded in sort of making that, like bridging that gap. Um, it is still very much like, like as you're watching it, it is very much like, oh, I remember, I remember doing this in the game. You know what I mean? It's not so much like, oh, like it's this part of the story. You know what I mean? Um, it's very much sort of the characters revisiting like you know places that you went to in the game and the anime very clearly being like remember this area it's like yeah i do i do remember <laughs> this area um so like it, in terms of fan service i think this this show is quite good um would you have liked to have seen it be a little bit more for the general audience or what do you think no. about it? Um, I think the problem with it being more for the general audience it would be this would have to be like a 50 episode series. Hmm, okay. Is Yoko Taro's works aren't for the general audience. You have to have a high IQ to understand yeah. near Automata. <laughs> for sure, for sure, bro. Um, so, also, speaking of fan service, did they do this? Is there any self-destruct yet? No, is not yet. Oh, um, but there's plenty, of, there's plenty of upskirts so far. Um, Good. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if, like, again, uh, obviously, it be being more for the general audience would be a much smarter decision. Um, you know, that's obviously how you make a more successful product. Um, in terms of whether I think it would have made for a better, like, story or a better viewing experience, I'm not too sure. Um, again, like, making the the sort of video gamey feel um go away in a, a a video game adaptation for an anime is is very tricky uh especially when you're dealing with a character like 2B um and it's hard to cuz 2B like as as simple as she is on the surface like there is you know um once you've gone through the story and you sort of know um 
what her real motivations are, like what her, like you know, I like her real purpose is. Um, mm -hmm. It's very easy. It's obviously a lot easier to pick up on why she, you know, behaves the way she does, why she says the things she says to certain characters. Um, and I don't really think there's any way to sort of subtly hint at that um, while, like, changing any of the dialogue. You know what I mean? I think Tubi sort of right. has to be the way she is for her character to work, for the, the twist at the end um, to work. And, like, yeah, I, I really don't... It's It's very hard for me to sort of think of a way that you could make this more for a general audience outside of like completely shifting this perspective to 9S um, who is a much more uh, chatty character um, this kind of actually who, who reminds has, me who it has much more introspection um, yeah but we, we do we do still see some of that in this anime it's just you know it is it is largely from the perspective of 2B right so yeah you know, you know what this actually reminds me of uh, a very similar conversation that we had just recently, which was Witch of Mercury, right? Because we were talking about how Witch of Mercury was definitely a little bit distanced from the standard, especially the um, the universe timeline, the the standard, you know, set setup of the Gundam lore and the Gundam stories that we usually see, right? Um, so it wasn't like necessarily a good description of it or just good descriptor or good generalization. It could have, the stuff that you see in Witch of Mercury couldn't necessarily be super generalized well to what you see in the general Gundam yeah. franchise with the series. No, not anymore, but buddy. That was... <laughs> oh, you, oh, that's fine. You want to talk Witch of Mercury? Well, I got some spicy things to say about that later. Don't worry. Well, let's, let, let me finish the analogy here. But the point was that it was done so to make it more palatable quote unquote to the general audience so it did take that sort of uh, road less traveled whereas near sort of stuck to its guns and said no this is going to be for the people who know near and especially since if we don't make it for the people who uh know near and we try to make it for er everybody then a lot of these character stories and interactions are going to end up veering off from what they originally were Right. Yeah. So those are the sort of the two contrasts that I see in these. Yeah, discussions. it's definitely a. Um, I, I imagine it was a real tug of war. Um, I'm sure production, um, probably squabbled and stuff. But you know, I I do respect um the series for sort of sticking to its guns, just sort of uh attempting to give the fans you know what they what they want or at least what they assume the fans want. Um, right, but uh, yeah, it, it's really hard to say whether it will, you know, pay off in the end. Whether it will be, um, like, it, whether it will stand on its own, right? Um, right, because a lot of the times when you do a video game adaptation, um, it's either very unique, right? Like it's a completely mm -hmm. anime original story, like something, say, a God Eater, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And you always run into the issue where it being unique typically means the fans aren't, they don't really care. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, um, the fans because, just want their stuff. <laughs> yeah, because the fans, the fans are, you know, in terms of like, t again, taking God Eater into example, when the fans hear a God Eater anime, they want to see the story of the game that they like to be yeah, exactly. animated, right? Um, yeah, exactly. But then, you know, when you have a video a video game story sort of trying to be uh, adapted, there's a lot of struggles there, and there's a lot of things that you have to cut out. There's a lot of things you have to truncate, um, and sometimes it just doesn't work. So typically, you make you know you take some of the characters um, and you make a new story, but then it's like, well, with the fans, it's like, well, do I do I care? Because this obviously isn't canon, right? Like when you're taking characters from a game and then putting them into a story that just didn't happen from the game right um, right like right. it's not even like it's it's like it's not even happening you know uh, it's not even relevant. also because the the story is the characters are the characters to yeah to 
a, a very integral extent. You can't really in a story you can't really separate the story from the characters because that is what forms the reader's perception of said character. Yeah, the, right? the characters sort of develop with the story, and so when you when you take those characters and put them into another different story, are they really the same characters? You know, or are they just right, people, exactly? Or are they just people wearing the faces of those characters? Right. right. Um, but yeah, I, I do respect this to sort of stick to it. Um, obviously, it's got some quirks to it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got some uh, some some blemishes, I'd say. Um, <laughs> hopefully, after the delay, um, everyone can come back to the production. And sort of, I don't know, maybe touch up on on some of the uh, some of those models. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I will say, like the two D animation is pretty good. Uh, it's it's fairly solid. Um, okay. And obviously, you know, they're reusing a lot of the the music from the game, which is again just a you fantastic better. score. Um, I mean, if you if you're if you have the license to license the anime, yeah, there there are there are a couple original to... tracks here and there which are, are pretty solid. Um, but again, it is largely reused, which I, you know, you can, you could knock points for doing that. Um, Why? But I think you'd be well, stupid. Most, I think you'd be stupid times, not to. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like when they it's like making like... a Star Wars game and not using the original Star Wars score. You know what I mean? Like you have yeah, access. Uh, yeah. You have access to some of the greatest music of all time. You're gonna use it. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like otherwise I I... you're just gonna wind up making a similar score anyway. That's not the same. Yeah. So it's like. Why bother? <laughs> yeah, just. I, yeah, I think at some point, obviously, you have to like add in a little bit, a little bit, a little, but like how you know successive series of games do, right? Uh, in in a franchise, but yeah. beyond that, it, you you have to, you know, Freebird is a meme for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of Freebird. Is it like a Darude Sandstorm? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Other than that, um, OP. Here, yeah. How uh, do you feel about Aimer. the OP here? Um. I mean, Aimer. Uh, the song is good. Uh, I like the song quite a bit. Uh, the visuals. I mean, they're interesting. They're, weird, they're unique. I uh, it. I appreciate the idea. I think the execution's a little bit off. Uh, I think it. I think it gets a little bit old. Um, the further yeah, it goes like, on, uh, I do, like I do too... kind of wish, I do kind of wish they sort of, uh, developed the initial concept into something more with the OP. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's... isn't it an allegory towards crumbling civilization because you notice it's all in one color. Uh huh. I mean, I think it's just stylistic choice, but yeah. Um. The ED is by uh, Amazurashi, uh, who's, you know, okay. a very cool band. I like Amazurashi. Uh, they, back when uh, Nier Automata was first launching, they did, Amazurashi did a, um, like, a Nier Automata uh, music video, like, collab thing. Oh, so I'm, I'm pretty okay. sure, I'm pretty sure Yoko Taro is just a big fan of Amazurashi. <laughs> so it's it's nice to see them come back. Which is not, that. yeah. Um, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but overall, again, I really think this is for the fans. I, I can't, I can't recommend this to somebody who like hasn't played uh, Nier Automata. Um, mm -hmm. So, if you haven't played Nier Automata, I would highly recommend it. Um, it's a good game. You know, I I have my complaints about it, but like in terms of storytelling, like it's it's phenomenal, right? Um, right. It's it's very good. Who's your favorite um, character in here? Pascal, probably. But yeah. Um, overall, I think it's a promising start. Um, again, we we only have the first three episodes, but the first three episodes, outside of the first episode, which was bad, um, the the initial look into what they're trying to do looks promising um 
I'm excited to see more. So mm-hmm. hopefully it pans out. Uh, hopefully they don't, I don't know, cut it short for no reason at all. Hopefully it gets, you know, enough episodes to uh, to fully develop. Um, but yeah, um, if you're if you are a fan, I, there's really no reason not to check it out. So yeah. yeah. I think we'll All see right. the aliens up and about. Moving? No. Yeah, I, I, I think doubt we'll that. get to see I a flashback of them. Damn. A You're... flashback? I mean Yeah. Maybe. I think I think Emil if Emil shows up, I think you might see a flashback. Um but yeah. I think we'll uh, get dude, more H. Sab- more like a thing of Emil's like the inter what would you call that? Like time frame between yeah, would be, I mean Emil. That time frame that animated have, would be really yeah, cool. It do, it does have a full novel. Um, people are interested. Oh, hold on, which ending is the one where she eats food? I like that ending. Uh I forget the one where she eats the fish. Yeah, I like dies. that ending. They yeah. should include it. Wow, I mean, spoilers. So, one thing I do really like. Just final note: uh, at the end of every episode, um, there's a little puppet show that they do with real puppets. Um. Oh, okay, I, that's cute. I bet yeah. Yoko Taro and, made um, those puppets himself. Very likely. Either Yoko Taro or his wife. I think his wife uh, does puppets and stuff as well. But, um, yeah, they do, like, a, a puppet show with 2B and 9S, uh, and they sort of go over some of the lore, um, and then, at the end, they make reference to uh, one of Nier Automata's uh, 24 endings. Because... Um, Near Automata has a lot of endings. A lot of them are joke endings where the game just literally yeah. instantly ends. And it, 24 um, endings, 24 episodes confirmed. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it, is, it, is, it is very cute. Um, it's very, it's very uh, unique. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Nier. What's your score for... out of 10? What's your IGN score? Um, for what we have right now, I'd give it. I'd give it a seven, maybe seven, seven and a half, something like that. I'd say seven, solid seven. So higher than a god hand, got it. <laughs> yeah. 